Kendra's here. She said go down this aisle. What? Oh, you know. <laughs> All right, Tom, are we good? All right, welcome everybody to oh, Pop hold, Side. Hold on, oh, just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> welcome everybody to the Pop Side Quiz Show. My name is Jason Letterman. I'm going to be your host for the day. Two teams, one from the American Museum of Natural History and one from Popular Science, will compete to the death in a trivia tournament of science that's not actually to the death. <laughs> Here are the rules. Each round, we'll have three of them. We'll have seven questions. Our teams will buzz in to be the first to answer. Each question can be between one and three points that a player can earn for their team. If they get it wrong, though, that player will lose team lose points for their team, and the opposing team will have a chance to get together, discuss the question, and put forth an answer. I'd like to take a moment just to quickly introduce our players or have them introduce themselves. I'm going to start with the team from the American Museum of Natural History, if you'd like to say hello. Hello, world. Uh, my name's Jackie Faraday. I'm an astrophysicist at the American Museum of Natural History, and I'm very excited to win today. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, my name is Anthony Caragiulo. I'm a, a geneticist at the Museum of Natural History, and I'm excited to win, too. <laughs> Hi, my name's Will Harcourt-Smith. Uh, I'm a paleoanthropologist and expert on early human origins, and uh, I'm also very excited to win. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right, three scientists very excited to win. Uh, I'm going to throw it over to the popular science team to introduce themselves. Hi, I'm Rachel Feltman. I'm the science editor at Popular Science, and this is like every anxiety dream I've ever had in my life. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm Clara Maldarelli. I'm an assistant editor at Popular Science, and I am a lover of science, and love always wins, so. <laughs> That's so sweet. I'm Corinne Iosio. I'm Corinne Iosio. I'm the deputy editor at Popular Science, and I'm proud to be here to serve as everyone's comic relief. <laughs> Great. Um, one last thing uh, before we start. After our seven questions, our official off-screen scorekeeper, scorekeeper Sophie, is going to tell us what the scores are. We'll update them on our very fancy scoreboards. Um, once we have our point totals for the round, you can wager up to as many points as you have for our bonus questions. So you could potentially double your score in one question, uh, but you could also end up at zero. And if we end up in the negatives, um, you can bet up to three points. So the most for, for a difficult question. All right, that being said, let's dive in. Let's get started with Pop Shy, Pop Shy Quiz Show. Round number one is called <laughs> Round number one is called Ah, I've been poisoned. Or is it venomed? And what's toxicity? Oh god, am I dying? <laughs> question okay. number one is worth one point. Imagine that you're in Australia and you see a platypus, and you cannot resist the urge to pick it up because it has a duck's bill and a beaver's tail. But also, it's a male platypus, since only male platypuses deliver venom. How does the male platypus... Will? Through a spur on its back leg. Through eyes, spurs or claws on its hind legs, that's correct. Boom. One point to AMNH. Nice. I'm getting closer to the buzzer now. <laughs> <laughs> Question number two is worth two points. The gas CH20 doesn't last for long in its natural state on Earth, but it's a common molecule in space. Sometimes, some scientists think it was the basis for more complex organic molecules that may have helped to jumpstart life on our planet. Which is ironic because CH20 is also a poison that we associate with death as a carcinogen in cigarette smoke and a preservative that museum scientists are probably familiar with. Rachel. Uh, what is formaldehyde? I mean, this isn't Jeopardy, but yes. <laughs> <laughs> what name is CH20 more commonly known by, formaldehyde? I'm very nervous, Jason. You're doing great. You just got two points for the pop side team. There's a lot of pre preface to these questions. There are. Three points. It was a three point question. It was a. Oh, wow. oh you said oh. two. I did say two because I switched them and then didn't change it in the script. So it is two. That's two, and then this okay. one is going to be three. Question three is worth three points. <laughs> uh, yellow, orange, black, red, and white are all warning colors in nature, uh, and shapes and patterns can be warnings as well. Take the bumblebee poison frog, for example. Its patterns of yellows and blacks signal that it's toxic to predators, saying, go ahead and eat me, but you're going to die mega painfully if you do. 
what is the term scientists use for warning coloration showing the unprofitability of prey to potential predators? All right, that's time is up. The correct answer is opposmatism. Oh. 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 That's why it's a three point question. <laughs> <laughs> I'll wait for the buzzer a little. Question number four is worth two points, and it's a multiple choice question. How many apple seeds does an average human have to eat to die of poisoning? Oh. A, 100, B, 200, C, 300, or D, 400? I'm just guessing. I'm Jackie. Going with 300. Incorrect. Oh. Sorry, guys, this Pop is a strategy. Team. <laughs> Can we have the choices again? A, 100, B, 200, C, 300, D, 400. Four, three, two, answer, please. Right, I need an answer. 200. That's correct. Wow. Wow. Question number five is a three-point question, but it's multiple choice. <laughs> to test for cyanide poisoning, scientists could stimulate a chemical reaction using iron sulfate, which creates this electric color that is also a popular pigment for paint and dye. A, Prussian blue, B, Kelly green, C, lead white, or D, indigo. Well. Prussian blue. Correct. Nice. Nice. Three points for the American Museum of Natural History. Question number six is worth one point. What is a tasteless, odorless white powder is minimally soluble in cold water, but exquisitely suited to hot cocoa, tea, or milk, and where 20 to 60 times the lethal dose is undetectable in two teaspoons of a drink? I'll give you a hint, it's also a favorite poison in many Hercule Poirot stories. Will. Cyanide. Incorrect. Oh, damn it, I know what it is. <laughs> <laughs> I know what it is. Four, three, two, one, answer please. Popside team. Arsenic? Arsenic is correct. Arsenic. And question number seven is our final question of round number one before the bonus. It's a three-point question. The following is a menu from a 1902 Christmas dinner party. Applesauce, borax, soup, borax, turkey, borax, borax, <laughs> and a lot of other things and borax. Who hosted this poisonous feast? Was it A the expedition ship Discovery. While exploring the Antarctic, the ship's cook used too much borax, a common meat preservative on food packed for the Christmas feast. Seven crew members tragically died. B, the US government. The meal was actually part of a federal experiment to test the toxicity of food additives. In these tests, groups of volunteers were known as poison squads. Or C, Marianne Cotton, one of history's most renowned poisoners. B. Rachel. B. B is correct. Oh, wow. What was B? It was the government. Oh. They, people volunteered to deliberately eat poison to see how it affected the human body. All right, scorekeeper Sophie, how are we doing on scores? Popside has plus eight. AM and H has plus four, but they also have minus three. Ooh, no. So one. Oh, oh no. Oh, no. Yikes. <laughs> Yes, teams. Team, teams, if you can adjust your scores <laughs> So, eight, on the black Which, side, yes. We were plus five minus... Plus four minus zero. three. <laughs> <laughs> you're saying we've got one. One. Yeah. All right. And you're saying we get really penalized when we get it wrong. That's the killer, yeah. yeah. All right, teams, here's our first bonus question. Um, you'll have... What do we say, 60 seconds? We'll say 60 so seconds to really right. discuss amongst yourself and write down your answer on a card that you will hand in to me. And we confer. 
you can confer and you're going to write down the number of points that you're wagering on the card. One. <laughs> Here we go. Here's your bonus question. Curare is a fast dissipating poison produced by plants. It's also proved to be a vital muscle relaxant during major surgeries. In the 1940s in the Colombian Amazon, which famed explorer and botanist observed its use in hunting customs to stun prey and ID'd 70 plant species from which locals extracted the seemingly magical poison? Where I do a little dance because we don't have any music. <laughs> Again, hello to everybody watching us on YouTube and Facebook Live. Thank you so much for tuning in. We're so grateful to have you here watching our first ever Top Side Quiz Show. If you're enjoying it, please make sure to share it on your social media feeds. You can use hashtag Top Side Quiz Show. Uh, and also make sure to tweet at Popside. What was the year? 1840s or 1940s? In the 1940s. No, no, no. Then it's not bad. Let's make sure to avoid and say don't today. 1940s. You got 10 seconds. Force it. Just write it down. Okay. Five, four, three, two, one. Answers, please. Okay. For zero points, Team Popsi says, Editor-in-Chief Joe Brown. <laughs> For one point, Team AMNH says, Fawcett. The correct answer is Richard Evan Schultes. Oh. Oh. What? <laughs> Do we remove our point? Yes. Oh my god. Oh, this is getting brutal. It's a wager system. <laughs> I didn't know you could wager zero. <laughs> yeah. You now we know. Now we know. Now you know. Now you know. Gotta go bigger. But go I appreciate home. that you took the risk. You yeah. bet it all. Yeah. You know. We're we're not we're not conservative. No. To clarify the timing, you have five seconds if you buzz in, and for um, team uh, conference, that's ten seconds. Great. Boom. All right, here we go. Round number two. It's a bird. It's a plane. It's things that can fly. Question number one is worth three points. Bats are expert and graceful flyers, but research shows they have one echolocating blind spot. What is it? Three, two, one. The answer is smooth vertical surfaces. They have no problem detecting uh -huh. horizontal hmm. surfaces like a still pond, but sound waves bounce off smooth vertical surfaces, so it leaves them with less <coughs> time to react. Question number two is worth one point. It's finally baseball season, and hitting the ball in a two-inch sweet spot on the bat can be the difference between a pop fly and a home run. Wind speed and altitude can also make a huge difference, but all other things being equal. Will a ball heading out of the park travel further on a hot, humid day or a cool, dry day? Cool, dry. Incorrect. What? Are you sure you have the correct answer here? <laughs> uh, it's on my card. It's got to be correct. The air is less dense. That makes no sense. Yeah. Oh, well. How do you? My card says hot, humid air tends to be less dense and easier for the ball to soar through. It's more dense. There's more moisture in the air. It's Judges? True. Where's the science check? I mean, I don't have the science on me right now, but <laughs> it's true. I mean, the, our researcher researched it. Um, <coughs> but, well, but we can we can we can look back. We'll, we'll back have we'll have, have the judges back. check and okay. come and come back to that. All right. Question number three is a multiple choice question. It's worth two points. How long can a frigid bird stay in the air? Is it a one week, b two weeks? C, one month, or D, two months? Two months. Well, Anthony, yeah. correct. Very good. Two points to AMNH. Question number four is worth three points. Birds and bats aren't the only animals that can fly. This creature can fly a surprising 100 feet. Anthony. Flying squirrel? Incorrect. Yeah. 
Topside team, if you want to discuss, you have 10 seconds. No answer? The answer is a flying snake. Oh. So you were on the right track. It can flatten out its body and glide through the air. Question number five. NASA is worth one point. NASA plans to build a new supersonic plane by 2022. What will be its distinguishing feature? Anyone? It will be quiet. It's not going to produce a, a sonic boom. Mm. Supersonic plane. Mm. Question number six is worth three points. Pterosaurs were flying reptiles that lived at the same time as dinosaurs and had a unique way of flying. To launch themselves into the air, they used their forelimbs almost like poles in a pole vaulting contest. Which modern animal uses a similar launch method today? Three, two, oh, one. Shit. Anyone? I'm going to risk it. Yeah. It's a, a oh. vampire bat. Oh, damn it. <laughs> we have to be conservative because if we get it wrong, we're <laughs> this whole point I, I knew thing. It was a, I knew it was a bat in my head, but I, you know, we, the system doesn't allow me to answer if I'm not what, 100% <laughs> sure. <laughs> the system allows you to answer whenever you want. Uh, I feel like no, this it doesn't. Is for you, because once you get a lead, you have no motivation yeah. to buzz in. Mm -hmm. That's prisoner's That's dilemma, true. right? Yeah. Uh. <laughs> question number seven is worth two points. It's a multiple choice question. How fast can a mosquito flap its wings? A, 80 times per second, B, 100 times per second, C, 800 times per second, or D, 1,000 times per second? I'm gonna guess. Go for B. Go B. Yeah. Anthony. B. Incorrect. No. Oh. That's what I would have gone with. Can so you repeat the question and the answers? How fast can a mosquito flap its wings? A, 80 times per second, B, 100 times per second, C, 800 times per second, or D, 1,000 times per second? Yeah. <laughs> uh, C. Correct. Yeah. 800 times per second? 800 times per second. Seems very, very fast. Wow. Mosquitoes are very, yeah. very fast. They are. <laughs> yeah. Scorekeeper Sophie, how are we doing? Topside has plus two. M and H has um, oh, wait, wait. minus six and plus two, so minus four. <laughs> All right. <laughs> we did a check on the home run ball yeah. flying in the air. It's not as much about hot and cold as it's humid and dry, and humidity can, I guess, supposedly like lift the ball a little bit more, have it stay in air a little bit longer. So the temperature is not really, yeah, so it's an, a bit ambiguous then, right? I mean, if you've ever flown an airplane, and I have pilot's license, <laughs> You don't get up off the ground fast on a humid, hot day. Anyway, we could talk about the physics of I'm, it. <laughs> I feel like that question. I'm, I'm going to use discuss. my hosting authority to give you back one point. Oh. Okay, that, was a story that says why dry air is heavier than humid air. I feel like I'm going to just take the point. <laughs> <laughs> That's how you want to get your point. Done <laughs> with <laughs> it. <laughs> All right, bonus question. AMNH, you guys can wager up to three points, and you have negative three that can get you back into the not negatives. I mean, let's go all in. Yeah, I mean, we got to go all in, right? Well, let's yeah. see what the can question they lose is. Points if, they, if they bet three, can they lose? Judges, if you're in the negatives, do you lose points by wagering? I would say, I would say no. I would say yes, because it's a wager. Yeah, but then, but then if you're in the negatives, it's hard to get out of the negatives. That's, that's the part problem. I, I think it's fair to say no, that you can only. I'm, yeah, I'm going to say no. When you're in the negatives. Right. Yes. I feel like we should be able to go down. I think so. Yeah. I, I would we say. should be able to go down. That's no, it's fair. their decision. Because otherwise. Yeah. It's their decision. <laughs> <laughs> You're busy running after the spear. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Here's the bonus question Liquid rocket engine technology is used in rockets from the Soyuz to the Falcon 9. Robert Goddard built the first liquid fueled engine 
but in what year was it launched? How close do we have to get? The year. You have to get the year. Okay. It's a bonus. It's a bonus. Let's see. I can't get the year to be that. It's a person. <laughs> Apparently not. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Ten seconds. Or we good? We're good. Popside wagered one point and said 1955, which is not correct. Okay. AMNH said 1948 for three points, which is also not correct. So 49. 1948. 1926. What? No, no, no. Sorry, oh. I'm asking you what the answer is. Oh, oh, was it 49? <laughs> No, the correct answer is it's actually much earlier than both of those. It's 1926. No way. Oh, wow. Oh, cool. Hmm. That's cool. Isn't that cool? Yeah. Science. <laughs> so wait, does that, should they change their scores again after? Each yes. Point? AM and H, I'm going to say, don't take the point. Just okay. So, right. You know, it should be competitive. It should be like. This is very, very controversial. <laughs> right. So then we'll down to what are they at? Two or, are they at? or it could be the most epic two, comeback right? ever. They're at nine. Uh, nine. Nine. Right. All right. You guys got to start thought, taking risks. Oh, <laughs> we were at minus three and they were at two. They're going to take the well, point. We had, we're taking oh, three oh, back oh, now. Oh, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Jesus. Yeah. Well, right, my well. God, so behind. Uh huh. <laughs> Stretch those. What are we at? Zero? No, we're at minus we're three. Minus six. Round number three. Both teams knew this one was coming. It's a round called, So You Think You're Smarter Than Me? Intelligence. And this round is, oh. <laughs> this round is brought to you by the popular science intelligence issue on stands now wherever magazines are available. Go out and buy one. Or check out our stories on popside.com. Or subscribe. Or subscribe, yes. <laughs> also, please buy subscriptions. <laughs> Here we go. Question number one is worth two points. What is the average IQ in the United States? Guess the number. Guess the number. Mm. I mean, should we go all out and just, just be as neg negative as we know. can? Yeah. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> we go? Let's do it. Let's just go. To, like, oh. It's high. They haven't buzzed once, so they weren't sure. Okay. Yeah. They haven't all buzzed right, once. Time, time, time once. Is up. I know. Caution is how you win. Right. It's not about knowledge. You get ahead, and then you don't caution. have to worry anymore. They, make, they see us make a mistake, and then they, they get a, a reduced <laughs> yeah. option from which They've to choose. They've gotten two, three throw-ins from us where yeah. they got eliminated one choice and then got to guess basically 50-50. I'm sorry. I'm not. I'm, <laughs> I appear to be a sore loser. Here. But go ahead. I appear to be. Yeah. <laughs> Spirited sore loser. The answer to number one, the average IQ in the United States is 98. I wasn't going to I would have said that. 100. Yeah, so. Question number two is worth one point. Humans often wonder if the Earth has the only life, let alone the only intelligent life in the universe. Which famous physicist bequeathed their name to a... Claire. Drake? Incorrect. I took a risk. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Which famous physicist bequeathed their name to a paradox that describes our seeming aloneness? Fermi. Correct. <laughs> Question number three is worth three points, and it's a multiple choice question. Ooh. Let's talk about the brain, the seat of intelligence. Neuroscientists have calculated the human brain has a maximum data storage capacity. How much can our noggins hold? It's multiple choice. It's oh, multiple sh choice. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like it, that gets negated. No, 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 keep going. Keep. Yeah. It's fine. We, haven't even, we are, haven't even heard the your choice. Your choices are. <laughs> A, one kilobyte, B, one gigabyte, C, one petabyte? C. Correct. Nice. nice. Three points. Big risk, big reward. <laughs> With a first time buzz in. I read it in the magazine this morning. Yeah. yeah. Wow. <laughs> it is right from the magazine. You guys told us it wasn't going to be. I said it wasn't necessarily. Okay. I just feel like that's misleading. Shh, we got it. Sorry, okay. sorry, sorry I'm Stop very it. competitive. <laughs> question number four. It's worth three points, and also a multiple choice question. 
Intelligence isn't just raw numbers, of course. In the modern era, the word is commonly used in a reference to geopolitical information gathered through investigation or espionage. Many federal organizations trade in intelligence, most notably the Central Intelligence Agency. Now that I said that, hello, CIA. <laughs> in what year was the CIA formed? A, 1932, B, 1947, C, 1949, or D, 1963? I'm just going to say C, 49. No. Incorrect. Did I say the right year you to did. the choice that I made? You did. Oh, darn, I was going to try. Could you say the choices again? The choices are A, 1932, B, 1947, C, 1949, or D, 1963. I think B. Yeah, we're going to guess B. It's correct. Which one was B? 47. 47. You were close. Question number five is worth two points. Artificial intelligence has a long history, but many people tie it back to a single article from 1950 titled Computing Machinery and Intelligence. Who wrote that article? <laughs> but I'm scared. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know. Do Corinne. Alan Turing? Alan Turing is correct. Oh, oh that's correct. Good, huh? good job. Like, it's too obvious. Yeah, it can't be that easy. <laughs> question number six is worth one point. It's a multiple choice question. For many years, women were thought incorrectly to be innately inferior to men because their brains were, on average, A, prettier, <laughs> <laughs> B, smaller, C, bigger, or D, full of holes like Swiss cheese? B. Well, correct. <laughs> One point for AM and H. <laughs> Question number seven, here we are. It's worth three points. Numerous environmental factors can shape IQ scores from breastfeeding to parents' income. But exposure to one chemical element, once common in paint, can reduce... Rachel. Lead. Can reduce an adult IQ score by more than four points. It's lead. Sophie, how are we doing? Uh, <laughs> Oxide has plus eight minus one, so plus seven. Uh, AMNH has math, plus Rachel. five minus three, so plus two. All right. Oh, all right. Clawed back a little. Yeah. <laughs> Here we go, our final bonus question. All in. All in. All in. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> One million points. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh. This question is worth 7,000 7, points. Okay. All right, here we go. Bonus question number three. People often say the number of neurons in the human brain is a nice round number, 100 billion. But this isn't correct. How many neurons does the brain have on average? I'll give you four choices. A, 95 billion, C, 77 billion, C, 86 billion, or D, 137 billion. Can we write it down? Can we write this down? Yeah, yeah you'll write this down. Oh, this will okay. be your bonus question. I'll you read just... them one more time. Your choices are A, 95 billion, B, 77 billion, C, 86 billion, or D, 137 billion. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I agree. And we have our wager. Nice. <laughs> All right, teams. Should have wagered a box. The we correct answer was C, eighty six billion. <laughs> <laughs> Team Bob's, I wagered four points and got the answer correct. Yeah. Of course you did. The team from the American <laughs> Museum of Natural History did not get it correct, and they wagered one million points. <laughs> <laughs> if you go out, you go out and start. Yeah, yeah. that's right. Yeah. That's right. All right. It's all second place. <laughs> Everybody's a winner. <laughs> We've come to the point of our game where it's time for me to announce the winner. 
Uh, in second place tonight, winning. Did you want to add up? We haven't gotten the uh, final score. No, oh, oh, yeah, okay. Right. Sophie, scores. We Sophie can we have the final scores, please? You bet a million points? Yeah. So you have negative 999,998 <laughs> oh, so, oh. points. And Popsai has positive 20 points. Okay. <laughs> can we get more zeros on here? Yeah. More numbers <laughs> to flip? Uh, All right, very good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We'll have to we'll have to get the million point scarf scorecards for next episode. Just make it a big thing. Yeah. <laughs> All right. um, I want to thank our two teams for playing. I really appreciate you coming thank in, you. taking the time. Thank you. Um, I hope you had some fun. I had a lot of fun. Our audience had so much fun. I'm sure. <laughs> uh, I guess I have to give these out now. Uh, so Team Popside, these are for you. Yes. These are our <laughs> very real 24 karat not bought on the internet gold medals. <laughs> nice. They say Popside Quiz Show winner on the back. And do we get a participation trophy? You do, in fact. You get a ribbon. science a rib participant oh, ribbons. <laughs> and we'll make sure to write down Popside Quiz Show All right. on Sounds the good. back. For you guys. So we well, well done. We yes, very good. Thank you. Thank you. Great job, everyone. Thank you so much for playing. Well Thank you so much for tuning in. We'll see you wins. next time on Popside <laughs> Quiz Show. Bye, everybody. Bye. Bye. <laughs> All right, there you go. There you go. Uh, I feel like I have some critiques <laughs> 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 Hold on. of the I'll, game I'll, show. I'll kill, I'll kill the microphones for the, for the <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I feel like You are relentless. <laughs>